No introduction this episode. I managed to fix all my graphical and performance issues during testing for the previous episode, so no disclaimer for that. I don't have any announcements for the future beyond the fact there'll be a Sonic GT review coming soon, as will be the plan for every game I make a playthrough of. Let's get straight into it then. The conclusion to Sonic GT. In the previous episode, we ran through the neon soaked streets of Sunset Boulevard to destroy the Dama block and all communication in the area, allowing Tails to triangulate a position for Eggman and the captive Ray. Hidden base, a large desert pyramid complex. Flying there, Tails drops Sonic and Mighty off as close to the pyramid as he can get, but is blocked from getting closer by a sophisticated suite of anti-air artillery. Thus begins the run through Eggman's ground defences to reach the central hub of the complex, to save Ray and destroy whatever new superweapon Eggman is developing. Luckily for such a time-sensitive mission, Hidden Base is not a particularly long stage by Sonic GT standards, lasting for just over 5 minutes. Pretty good for my first attempt at the final stage of the game. It's also fairly easy, with the main threat being simple electric fences and mines, both of which are easy to avoid, and some turrets, which have such poor aim as to be effectively set dressing. Both of these points can be potentially attributed to the lack of a boss, as that is carved off into its own stage, but it also helps that Hidden Base lacks many real platforming challenges, which are the primary areas that Sonic GT can really get difficult. The high momentum and speed gained from, well, everything in this game means that even simple jumps between platforms can become a real nightmare, but the constant walkable surface surrounding every platform nullifies any danger you might think you're in. In the absence of something truly annoying or frustrating to deal with though, a new problem steps up. The camera. Sonic GT always starts levels with the camera in auto mode, which in this level just means it tries to faceplant the floor every few seconds for some reason, but even Freecam has some teething problems. Hidden Base likes to hide where you need to go at multiple points behind sharp corners or sudden drops, which does lead to a couple of occasions where I run straight into a wall, and also has a fair number of paths that make it difficult to figure out what angle and axe you're running on, meaning it can be hard to suss out when you need to roll. But again, Hidden Base flies past with only a few minor hiccups. An indecisive homing attack means I attempt this Banig chain three times before it actually locks onto enough targets to reach the next area. Beyond that, I very quickly get stuck on a pipe and nearly fall off a pillar, but I make a fairly massive shortcut that nullifies most of the time lost. From there, it's just one last electric fence grid and minefield left before I reach the goal with 68 combo stars. So very close, yet so far. With Hidden Base completed, Sonic, Mighty and Tails cats up to Eggman and the Captive Ray, where they learn about how this entire Grand Tour has just been one giant trap. If you cast your mind all the way back to Episode 1, you'll remember how Eggman taunted Ray about how he was bait to lure Mighty into captivity, where his cell can be extracted and its composition copied to create armor for a new Badnik line. Here, it's revealed that Eggman actually had a fragment of Mighty Cell the entire time. Hold on a minute. I can understand why Eggman will lure Sonic and Tails to be test subjects for his new machine. It's seemingly his main social interaction, and he's done practically the same thing dozens of times. But why would he bother with Ray and Mighty? He says it's so he can have his cell as a trophy, which... Yeah, feels like a cop-out to give any sort of reason why he would knowingly get two extra heroes involved to stop him. But this is all just a prelude to the final boss of the game, the hard-boiled egg tank. Get ready for a whole world of pain. While the two previous bosses of the game were well, either a really fun, if slightly annoying race against a metal miner, or a slow but ultimately completely alright bird, the HBET is one of the most arbitrary and seemingly random boss fights I've ever experienced. Theoretically, it's really not that hard. It has four phases, each ramping up the difficulty slightly. Phase 1 is where you fight it on an unnoted flat surface, where it launches machine gun salvos and rocket barrages at you. From Phase 2 and beyond, it introduces an egg laser to the end of the attack string, with each subsequent phase making each attack last longer and cause more of the arena to fall away. The general gist of each of the attacks is to simply run around the arena, occasionally changing direction to throw off his aim, especially with the egg laser, before Eggman opens himself back up to allow you to hit him on the back of the tank before he starts a sealed backup and moves on to the next phase. You have plenty of rings dotted around in that can generally be light to be dashed into, and the walls have more rings, as well as sealed and other capsules for those who can get a good war run going. 
sounds simple enough, but the boss falls apart pretty quickly. The main problem is just how arbitrary all of his attacks feel. With most bosses, it's simple enough to suss out when they should hit you, they'll generally have decent enough tails that show you which attack they're about to use, and attacks will generally be animated in such a way that you can clearly tell whether you've been hit or not. The hard boiled egg tank does not do this. The machine gun and missile servos are mostly harmless, falling either slightly in front or behind you as long as you keep moving, until they randomly decide to hit you for seemingly no apparent reason. Actually, that's not entirely the truth. The machine gun rounds will randomly hit you despite you having not actually moved into their fire, but the rockets will occasionally contain a few horizontal seeker missiles mixed in with the rest of the cells that will appear from the side of the screen and hit you within the blink of an eye, with no time or way to react or avoid the attack. The egg lasers are slightly better, the hitboxes are a complete lie, being way larger than the explosion they make would imply, but they can at least be repeatedly avoided by changing direction right as the blast is first fired. I also have no idea how you're supposed to actually get anything on the arena walls without attacking the boss and being lucky enough to get fired towards the speed sneakers capsule, as you lose too much speed on the walls to not just get hit by an attack as soon as you become slow enough to start slipping back down to the floor. In the end, after probably a dozen attempts, most of which end with me getting hit with some attack out of nowhere or being caught within the same time zone as an egg laser blast, the hard boiled egg tank is eventually defeated. It certainly isn't a dignified defeat. I spend most of the final phase floating in the updraft surrounding the boss and moving slightly to avoid attacks before jumping out to hit their weak point, but it feels cathartic after 20 minutes of holding sideways on my controller and occasionally jumping or turning the other way. Eggman takes this defeat about as well as every other time he's been defeated, and Sonic gives him the usual lecture about friendship. For anyone in the comments, yes, it is spelled that way in the cutscene. Then, after a long anticlimactic tangent about how bad Eggman smells, of pickled eggs and cucumbers apparently, the Doctor escapes with Sonic, Mighty and Tails in close pursuit, leaving Ray alone to be jump scared by Metal Sonic, who I'm fairly certain is a post-game unlockable. Comment below if you'd like to see me 100% complete this game, by the way. And with that, the credits roll, Ray is unlocked, and the game is completed. Out of all of the names in the credits, I like to point out Gabriel Gonzalez, who is the main creator of the game and also responsible for level design and boss development, but I'm willing to overlook that, as well as Daniel Coyle, who is responsible for the superb feeling bumper ends in the powers of this game. It also marks the end of this playthrough the first I've completed in this format, but hopefully not the last. Definitely not the last, I'm like one level away from beating Triple Trouble 16-bit, so expect the final episode of that to come out soon as well. As said at the start, I plan on making a review for each game I complete in this format after finishing a playthrough, so expect that soon enough, but I'd mostly just like to thank you all for watching, and so.